we're here. Here we go. Here we have. I'm a senior lecturer in uh, Foundations of Computing at Middlesex University and I'm going to talk about uh, an introduction to theorem proving with Koch. Basically what I'm going to talk about is something completely different from what, what George was talking about. I'm going to talk about software verification. Basically, what do you do if you to make sure so you've written this wonderful piece of software which has to do something and we can just pass me the... Uh, sorry, I have a bad case of any fever, so I don't need to uh, wipe my nose very often. Um, so yeah, so you've written this wonderful piece of software and you want to make sure that it actually does what it's supposed to do. You have a very safety critical, I don't know, uh, airplane control system and you want to make sure that it doesn't uh, uh, screw up in normal ways. So one of the ways you can do that is by using uh, software verification, and one of the methods of doing that is uh, your profile, which I'll be talking about here for this slide. So obviously I'm not going to be able to give you a, a um, this is the EEC, this will be the union type, basically. Um, so um, they, they, and what they did is all the different branches of the variant, so different branches of the variant type were uh, encoded using a bit mask. So they, and this, the, the size of this was one byte. So basically you could have 256 different variants and uh, every one of these was encoded by, by a bit mask of 8 bits. Um, somebody decided then to, to try out what happens if you actually de de define a variant type with 257 variants and then it turned out stuff, there, there was an overload and uh, an overflow, sorry, and uh, you managed to prove false. So that's where it basically went uh, wrong. Uh, you, Coq also has a plug-in mechanism, so you can actually, you know, figure out. Um, you can use that to, to uh, subvert things a lot. But this is this is a much more uh, easier thing to uh, remedy because you can basically, if you're doing something vital, you can just disable all the plugins and make sure that you don't have any uh, things uh, in there. Um, so the main thing about Coq, so I'm going to. So the 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 the, the main thing about how Coq works is the proofs as programs thing. So I'm, I'm comparing it to Isabel here, which is a different theorem prover. But mainly proofs as programs. How does this work? Well, you, you've got this. So in normal, when you, when you have a, a standard software engineering, a standard program, you have a program which has a type. So every function has a type. The plus function, for example, takes two integers and results in another integer. That's, that's uh, the, 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 you know. So, uh, and this is in any type program language, you have that kind of thing. You might have things like higher order functions. But yeah, the thing is, so, so type checking is basically checking that uh, a program actually conforms to its type. So, uh, so software verification basically, so the idea is, is very simple. You usually, when you, when you write any part of software, you have a specification, you try to implement the specification, and uh, hopefully uh, after your whole uh, possibly global software development process, you hope that the implementation actually matches the specification. Um, and of course you can just do that by, by testing or all kinds of other uh, methods that you have. But it would be nice to actually have a, um, a system that tells you, okay, you know, this matches the, matches the specification. So that's what theorem proof is about. You can actually formally check whether your implementation matches your specification. It's not entirely reliable, I mean, you can never be entirely sure because, uh, for example, your specification might be incorrect, you might have forgotten to specify some very important uh, things. The, the example I was using, imagine you're um, designing a uh, public transport system, the Docklands Line Rail, I don't know, and you've forgotten to specify that two trains can't be at the same place at the same time. So, if you haven't got that in your specification, your implementation still matches your specification, but you do get uh, horrible results in the end. So the specification, you, so you can match whether the specification matches the implementation. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's actually you know, a good program. And also there could of course be bugs in your theorem program, and we'll be talking about that uh, a bit later as well. Uh, it doesn't happen often, but it might, uh, might still be the case. So you can't be 100% sure, but you can be much more confident than you were before about uh, what's going on. So, what is COC, which is a software tool? So, uh, on this 
uh, in this, uh, you can actually see it. So, um, COC is a formal, so it's a proof management system. It's, it's, a, it's a system, a software system that, that can be used to manage proofs, uh, mathematical proofs. It provides a formal language, so it is a complete programming language uh, that you can use to uh, write programs. Uh, so you can also use it to write mathematical definitions, executable algorithms and theorem. So it's both, it's both got the mathematical, logical side and there's also a programming side which is useful because basically you can write your specification as a, as a logical uh, set of logical theorems. You can, imp you can implement your uh, program in the programming language and then you can use the, the, the system to match, to, to, to make sure that your algorithm actually matches your, your mathematical specification. Uh, there's an, an, this is semi-interactive, so it's the, the thing is because you can't do this automatically. This is since since uh, Gödel's incompleteness theorem, we know that uh, you know, logical systems are generally either they're completely uh, trivial, in which case they, they're not very useful, or they're not. It's not automatically decidable whether you know anything is, is true within the system. So what the the way that Koch uses art, it's it's semi-interactive, so you actually guide the system along as it, uh, as, it, as it makes the proofs, but then the proofs can be machine checked. So you try to prove the correctness of your program and then the, the, the system will tell you yes this proof is correct, uh, you haven't forgotten anything. Which is, uh, what is. Um, so just a few uh, bits and pieces, so stuff that this has been used for. So it, it, it started out basically uh, doing quite a lot of mathematics, so uh, the first um, uh, application, for example, was proving the four color theorem. So any planar graph can be colored uh, using only four colors, uh, which which was um, automatically verified, which was verified using Koch by Georges Gontier and his team. Uh, then people started doing other mathematical stuff, such as the fundamental theorem of al algebra, which is from Nijmegen, uh, my old university. Disjoint set data structure correctness, and then finally the, the most recent result and the, the most impressive as well is the five Thompson old order theorem, which is a big result from group theory, which has just been formally verified uh, at, at the area. And then it's, it's also it's it's starting to go into it, they're starting to get into uh, software verification. Also, the big project in that is Comcert, which is a, a completely certified C compiler. So again, compiler is is a pretty important piece of infrastructure because you want to make sure that the, the program you put in is semantically equivalent to the program you get out. So you write something in C which does something, you want to make sure that the program it gets compiled into does more or less the same thing. And that's what, what the Comsort team is, and they've got a completely, complete, uh, completely verified compiler for, if I remember correctly, a, a pretty large subset of C. And this is, this is a big software project, I mean, so this is not just something uh, uh, that you can do academic exercises with, this is actually something that you can use to verify real software. Uh, so how does it work? Well, you've got, so there's, a, there's the calculus of inductive constructions, which is the mathematical foundation uh, behind it. So uh, the important bits here are the inductive, so it's called the whole system of inductions, it, it, it goes uh, pretty deep, it's, it's based on it, and it's based on construction, so it's constructed as mathematics, which means that um, proofs are always based on, on, on things you know. You can't, uh, so constructing, I, I don't know how um, much of a background you have in logic, but basically when you talk about uh, constructivist mathematics, um, it, it, it doesn't have the excluded middle. So in, in classical logic, um, a theorem is either false or true. There, there are no uh, missing, there, there, there are no other options, either like false or true. In construction, in constructive ma mathematics, it's, uh, the theorem can also be unproven. So, for example, from software engineering, we talk about P equals NP. That's a theorem. We, don't, we can't prove it's true. We, also, we can't prove it's not true. So, we can't actually base anything on, on that particular knowledge. And that's kind of something that's, uh, uh, that's modeled by uh, constructive mathematics. Um, so Koch has a few languages, so the, the Galina is the, is the main bit, which is the, the programming language which also serves to uh, express logic, and we'll go into that uh, a bit later. And it is a completely richly typed functional programming language, it has some, some logic uh, additions. So basically what you can really do is you can both write both your specification 
and your implementation in the same language, so the specification being the logic bit, the implementation being the programming bit, and you can then use the, the, the software to check that they match up. So the next language is basically the command language, and the tactic language is the language you use to actually create proofs with. So you have tactics which basically manipulate uh, the proof, and you use the tactic language to actually gradually create a proof of whatever you're doing. This will become much clearer in the demo because uh, it helps if you actually see what's going on. Um, so, the question of course, when you're talking about um, verification is always, who do I need to trust? I mean, this, this cock system tells me that my software is okay, but you know, uh, okay, so what does that actually mean? So there are, there are five things that you need to trust. So you need to trust the theory of behind cogs, so the, the calculus of inductive constructions. The, the, you need to trust the fact that that's uh, consistent, that there are no uh, problems with that. So this is something that has been you know, published 20 or 30 years ago. It's quite old, it's been peer reviewed, so I think you're, you're pretty safe there. Um, you need to trust the cog kernel implementation. Fundamentally, and we'll go into the reasons behind this one, what you need to trust about cog, you need to trust its type checker. So, and the type checker is basically the cog kernel implementation, which is about uh, 10,000 lines of code. You can, if you want to, and again we'll go into this in a minute, um, you can write your own type checker and uh, do the proof checking yourself if you don't trust the kernel implementation, but that's obviously quite a bit of work. Uh, the OCaml compiler, so Coq is written in, in OCaml, program language OCaml, um, there may be bugs in that, that, that will create bugs in Coq as well. Again, OCaml has been pretty heavily used for the last 20 years, so they've, they've probably kinked out a major bug, but you never know. Hardware errors, obviously, uh, you're running this, this program on uh, a system, so there may be errors in memory or in, in the CPU that it creates errors. And yourself, again, like we said, if, for example, if the specification doesn't include vital properties, and you can prove all you want that it's not actually going to help you. So those are the, the sort of the, the, the reasons why it, where it might go wrong. And it can sometimes go wrong. So one of the most interesting bugs they had uh, recently in a, in a in Coq is where is, is one of the, the um, where they managed to make a proof of false. And in logic, making a proof of false is, is basically the thing you don't want to do. False, by definition, is a proposition that cannot be proved. So if you manage to prove false, you've basically declared the entire logic inconsistent and, and horrible things will happen. For example. Um, and type inference is, is the other way around. You, you get a given type and you try to figure out whether a program uh, fits that. So that's, that's programming. Now the point, so this, uh, this is what's called curry howard isomorphism. What they actually do is basically say that proving mathematical propositions is exactly the same thing as programming. So a type is equivalent to a mathematical proposition. A program is equivalent to a proof. So if you um, so basically if you want to, if you want to prove a certain mathematical proposition, you find its equivalent type, um, and then you try to find a program that actually has that type. So for example, if you have a proposition A implies B, the proof of that uh, the, the program that proves that proposition would be a function that turns A into B. A implies B. Basically, logically, you're saying if I have a proof of A, I also have a proof of B. So, when you think about it in programming terms, it's basically a function that turns any proof of A into a proof of B. So, this, and this is the, the, the whole program, so as proofs concept, proofs as programs concept, the query hierarchy isomorphism, the fact that types and mathematical propositions are equivalent, and programs and proofs are equivalent, making a proof of a proposition is basically the same thing as making a program that has a certain type. Um, and the, the nice thing about this is that so the type checking is generally decidable in the sense that you, if, you, if you have a certain type in a program, you can check whether the program fits the type. So you can check whether a proof is correct for a given proposition. So if you have a given proof, you can check whether it's correct. Fine, because type check is generally decidable. However, the other way around, type inference, where you go from a proposition to a proof, is generally not decidable which is why Coq is semi-interactive, because if you want to prove certain things, 
uh, yeah, you will, the, the crop won't be able to do or, or autom automatically automatic theorem proofing. There is, there are things like automated theorem proofing, but generally the, the things you can prove with that are, are extremely limited because, uh, because again, of good is incompleteness theorem. Uh, there will always be propositions that you can't prove inside your logical system. Uh, yes, yeah, so random bits and pieces. So, Coq is a very powerful module system. It's a fully fledged functional programming language. And what's also very nice is that you can do code extraction. So, once you've written your algorithm in Coq, you can actually uh, extract the code into a slightly more usable programming language, which is Haskell or OCaml. So, one you can actually compile. Right. So, that being said, it probably becomes much clearer if I actually start giving a demo. So, let's. Um, so just some, some very simple bits and pieces. Um, so this is, this is what, what I'm doing at this point is basically just mathematics. So I start out, uh, so I define two random propositions called A and B, that's propositions, and then I'd like to prove the theorem simple, which means A implies A. Well, that obviously, uh, very obviously is true. In fact, this is actually so true that you might, even if you want to, you can just prove it automatically. <laughs> Cock will just just prove it for you. This is this is so trivial. Like that. Yeah, apparently it's. Uh, it's uh, I've, I've, I've spent too much time with computer science. Uh, so yeah, um, but just to show you how Cock works, you can also prove it. So for example, in this case, I'm trying to prove A implies A. So you'll see that in the in the upper right window, we've got uh, basically the goals. So it says that there's one sub goal which I'm trying to prove. A implies A. So the line that you see between those two is the line, so everything above the line are my hypothesis, so the things I know. Everything below the line is what I'm trying to prove. So for A implies A, basically you need to, if you think about this, this is saying if I know A, I want to prove A. So what I can do is I can introduce that hypothesis. I can basically put A above the line and prove from that A, which is uh, the same thing. And now it's easy because now I've got uh, a hypothesis which says, okay, I know that proposition A is, is true, uh, and I'm trying to prove that proposition A is true, so this is basically my exact assumption, so I can use that tactic to do that. And then I say to the end, and now if you look at principle, you can actually see how the proofs as programs approach works. So simple is basically a function that takes uh, 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 something, uh, a variable h of type A, and returns h itself. So it's, it's the identity function, which has, of course, type from a to a. So I've now written a program that turns type a into type a, and uh, basically is therefore also proof of this, of this theory. Uh, so you can do something slightly more complicated. So I might do a implies b implies a and b. Again, I can introduce my hypothesis. So now I've got two hypotheses, a and b. Now I'm trying to prove A and B, so I need to split that particular bit into two. Um, I, um, and now I can again, I'm, so now you see that I actually have two sub-goals that I need to prove. Um, so in this case, my first sub-goal is I'm trying to prove A, but I know A and B. So I'm going to say, okay, well that's exactly my hypothesis H, so I use that, and that's exactly H0, which is the B. So you can see, so the way the AND is implemented in COC is actually, if you, if you look at the lower uh, right screen, you see that it's actually defined as a, as, a, as a data type called AND, which is two parameters, A and B, so the two, the two uh, different parts of the, of the AND, the two, uh, the two propositions. And it's called exactly one constructor, the CONJU constructor, which is used to, um, to, to, to take two propositions and create an, an AND bit. So you, you have basically AND takes, um, yeah, you construct an AND type by taking two propositions and turning those into A and B. So again, this is just, so types and propositions are represented as types, so the AND type is the type that represents A and B as, as a proposition. And if you look at the also simple bit, well, it basically does exactly that. So the also simple takes h of type a and h zero of type b, and then uses the conj constructor to, to turn that into uh, an, uh, an end type. 
or is uh, different. So, because for the or, we have two different ways of making an or. If you if you know A or B, well, you can either A. Uh, so you can either create a proof of A or B on the basis of A. You can also create a proof of A or B on the basis of B. B. So the or type has actually has two constructors, one from A and one from B. And if you look at how that works, that's exactly. If you start proving things based on that, it's the same thing. So now I'm trying to prove. I know that A or B is true, I'm trying to prove B or A. So basically I now need to do a case distinction because I don't know how I came to A or B, so I need to consider both cases. So I distract the hypothesis. And then, so either, so the first constructor is, uh, the first possibility is I came there from A. So in that case, I need to now tell Koch, okay, so I'm trying to prove, I know A, and I'm trying to prove B or A. Well, that means that I need to use the second constructor, so the OR intro 2, which is basically from A to B or A, and then I can use exact A. And there's a, there's a shorthand for this, which is basically left and right, because obviously these are the left and the right parts of the OR. So in this case, I'm trying to prove B or A, well, I'm going for the left parts of the OR, so left and exact H. And then, so just very quickly, because uh, sometimes I don't want to go on for too long, so how does all this work when you talk about uh, software verification? So how do, how do you do use all this stuff for, to, to verify uh, a program? Well, that's so Koch has a special extension for that, which is called the program extension. But basically what I'm doing here is I'm dividing, very simple, a function that divides a, a natural number by two. So it uses the piano definition of the natural number. So any natural number, if it is the successor of the successor of another number, so if my number n is the successor of the successor of p, basically what I return is I recursively call myself with p and the successor of that. So the the the, the what is basically saying is that uh, n divided by two is so if n is p plus two, then the p divided by two plus one is uh, is this uh, gives you the same result. Uh, if it's if if, the, if n is not uh, p plus two, so if n is either zero or one, you just return zero. So this does division without remainder. Basically, just uh, takes the form. Um, and how I so again, you don't need to to um, uh, believe my particular uh, explanation here because we're going to actually verify it. So div two is a version that takes it takes a net, it takes a natural number as input, but it's takes a, um, so it, 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 I, I'm, I'm attaching a number of properties to my output. So I'm saying it outputs a natural number, x, and the property here is that either n is 2 times x, so if I uh, multiply my output by 2, I get my input back, or if I multiply my output by 2 and uh, add 1, I get my output. So basically this is logically, mathematically saying, yeah, my, my, my output is uh, my input divided by 2. Now, the thing about this is that if I just run this, Koch actually uh, can work out the things I need to prove. For, so it, it, it works out automatically, given the program I've just inputted, and the properties I've added, it, ju it just automatically works out what I actually need to prove. So, You'll see this. So you see, solving all obligations automatically. There are four obligations remaining. So I need to prove four things apparently to, to get this working. So let's look at the first one. Um, so again, p x uh, natural numbers, and then if p is x plus x plus zero, or p is x plus x plus zero plus one, then the successor of the successor of p, so p plus two, is uh, x plus x plus zero plus one plus one, or uh, the successor of the successor. Uh, the successor of the successor of p is the successor of x plus the successor of x plus 0 plus 1. Now, so here, what you see here is that, so you can just prove this right away uh, by the, this bit of cock magic, and then you can go and, and define it. And then again, it tells me, okay, I've done one definition, and so I've got three obligations remaining. So I can go through the next obligation, too, which is basically if p plus 2 is not equal, so if for all p, for all natural numbers p, uh, I can't find I can't find the p plus two that's equal to n. Then either n is zero or n is one. Well, again, I can prove that using cock. And then it's trying to solve some more. So apparently, obligation three and obligation four 
are so simple that Koch can um, show them that solve them automatically. I don't, I don't know if you can make your printer out. Give to obligation three. Oh, ah, yeah, we can actually. Okay, so this is obviously the way that when you print this out, it doesn't look quite as user friendly as uh, as in the the, the normal view. But basically, I think this is what this what this is proving is it it yeah it looks like it's starting from false. So basically, any proof that starts from false is, is very easy to uh, to to do because you basically start false implies everything. X false on sigma mm -hmm. leave it in Latin. Um, but yeah, let's let's just go back for a moment and see how this actually works. So the, so basically, I'm trying to prove that p is x plus x plus so I know that either p is x plus x plus zero, which is basically saying p is two times x, or p is x plus x plus zero plus one, which is p is two x plus one. So let's let's first start doing a case distinction on that. So I destruct O, I, I do a case distinction on that hypothesis, and I call the different uh, the different uh, cases. So I call the first one I call O, the first one I call one. So I run that, and then you'll see that I have two sub goals. So the first one is uh, that I'm looking at now is O, where I have P is x plus x plus zero, and the second one, if we can look at that, focus two, where we can basically see that's my case P is x plus x plus zero plus one. Now, um, if P is x plus x plus zero, then obviously the successor of the successor of P is also equal to the successor of x plus the successor of x plus zero. Because if basically what this is saying, if p is 2 times x, then the successor of the successor of p is also the successor of the successor of 2 times x. So let's go, let's take the left part of our goal here. Uh, so I'm basically retyping this, so I might as well without the syntax. So, oops. Left. So now I need to do something clever. Um, so basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to. Uh, use the fact that I'm going to use something from Cox standard library and I can just print it so the plus n is 1 plus n is n basically tells me and this is what you can see here so the the successor of uh, n0 plus m is equal to n0 plus the successor of m so where you add 1 to it doesn't really matter a plus b plus 1 is the same thing as a plus b plus 1. It doesn't really matter where you put the parentheses. So I'm using that particular... And, uh, so I'm rewriting that, uh, and I've got the back arrow because I'm rewriting uh, against the, the... So it basically says, so plus n is 1 is a theorem that basically says something is equal to something. So a is equal to b, and I basically have b and I want a, so I'm, I'm rewriting in the, in the, in the opposite sense opposite direction. So now you'll see that if I run this, oops, if I, that's the volume control, so you'll see that actually it basically rewrites my goal according to that um, to that particular uh, theorem. So it replaces x plus s x plus 0 by successor of x plus x plus 0. And now if you look, if you look at the goal, I can now use my original hypothesis. I can actually say that because I know that p is x plus x plus zero, so I can in my report, in my hypothesis, I can just replace p by x plus x plus zero, which I've done now. And basically, now you can see that both parts of the equation are the same. So I can just use the fact that I know that equality is reflexive, and I say reflexivity, and that's a solved my subgoal. And then you can for for the you can basically do the same thing here. So for the second part, you do more or less the same. So I take the right part here. Now I in this case I actually need to specify a bit more because I because if I just use plus sm, because there are there are different occurrences of this particular pattern that this tries to rewrite in the <coughs> because I've also got the successor of x plus zero in my in my thing. So if I just rewrite it like this, it's actually not going to use the proper rewriting because it's basically going to do something very strange. It's going to replace because one in the natural definition is also defined as the successor of zero. So basically it rewrites that and that's not what we want to happen. So I need to specify the right one. So I'm just saying okay the first parameter I want to rewrite is X. 
this does rewrite the right one. Again, now I can just use the fact that p is x plus x plus zero plus one. Now, bar some parentheses, I've actually got the right bits, so I can just use reflexivity, and it will tell me. Fair enough, you've proved that. Um, so, and of course, this is this is the, the, the again, this is a very simple algorithm, and there's there's much more that can be done with this. It it, it becomes much more complicated, but I think. For the moment, you've got at least sort of a, a, a taster of what this is like, how theory works. It is something that, that you can only do for, for critical programs, of course. As you see, even proving a very simple program already takes quite a bit of effort. So, um, but yeah, for, for critical sections of your program, for critical bits and pieces, you can use this to, to, to verify that you know, your specification actually matches your implementation. So, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, you can also just look at the COC website, website which is at... Um, so... Oops... COC... Uh, okay, so this, is, this is made by the French National Research Lab, so this is the website for COC. You can look at that. They've got, uh, they've got some, uh, some papers, there's, there's a tutorial, and you can download the software and try it out for yourself. So, any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Otherwise, uh, we'll pass to Louis, I guess. I only yeah. need one uh, yeah. explanation about the tool. Uh, it is the tool for check. Uh, program correctness, or it is a verification tool, and who will be the user of the tool? Uh, so the, the the user will be basically the the per yeah. So it, it is a, a program for both for checking correctness of mathematical proofs and and software verification because you can the things are more or less the same uh, in, in in the way the way Cock thinks those two activities are more or less the same thing. So the people who use that well would be either the, the developer of the program or somebody who tries to, to, to verify that particular uh, program. So it, it, it's not a tool that, that your end users would use, it would literally be something that uh, would be used as part of a testing procedure, for example, or something like that. Yeah, it, uh, it will be used for real testing? Hmm. For example, yeah, that would be, that it's definitely something that you'd use as a part of a development cycle rather than uh, that, that, that end users would, uh, would use. Alright. Okay. Any questions? Questions? Yes. This is a high road. And those are the pyramids. Kind of cool.